Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. As promised, we will begin a series of short segments on Advanced I.O., revisiting some topics that we've discussed or at least hinted at before. In this first video, we'll talk about non-blocking I.O. Back in week 7, segment 5, we talked about interrupted system calls. We noted that a syscall is more likely to be interrupted if it doesn't complete for a long time, and we identified the following candidates of syscalls that perform I.O., but that may block for a long time or even forever. We noted that for each of these calls, an interruption might lead to a return with an erno of eInter, or that the syscall might be automatically restarted. But neither solves the initial problem. Sometimes you really do not want to block. You would like to perform the action, and if it can't complete, you'd like to know this. We also hinted at some ways of working with multiple file descriptors that might block an I.O. when we talked about multiplexing I.O. using select, but that doesn't translate well for all possible use cases. So instead of playing victim to the blocking I.O., we'd like to instead enter non-blocking I.O. By using non-blocking mode, our system call will immediately return if we can complete the operation and set erno to e would block or e again. The two erno values are the same and, as so often, derive from discrepancies in the early Unix versions before standardization. They by and large represent the same error condition. E again basically says you should try this operation again, while E would block most literally says this operation would block. On most Unix systems, the two are equivalent. Anyway, how do we enable non blocking mode? Way back in week 2, we already encountered the most trivial way to do that by passing o non block to the open system call when we open a file. But we also remember from that lecture that we don't always are in the position to open the file and instead may be operating on a file script that was open for us. So in that case, we can use f control to set the same flag. Here, let's look at an example of doing this and what the effect of setting this flag is. In this program, we are writing 50 megabytes of data to send that out. This isn't very exciting, but we'll also report on the success or error of each write call and will enable non blocking mode or not depending on how we are called. Since we're operating on standard out, we have to use F control to set non blocking mode. After that, we loop 50 times, each time trying to write 1 megabyte of data. As we know, write may return fewer bytes than we requested, or it may fail. We'll record the standard error each of these cases. Okay, let's give it a try. We, we redirect output to dev null because we don't want 50 megs of data written to our terminal, but we see that each loop iterates and writes one megabyte of data. To verify, if this is 50 iterations, let's count the statements printed to standard error. To do that, we need to redirect standard error and get it into a pipe, while still suppressing our normal standard out. This shell redirection invocation accomplishes that. Revisit our lecture on file descriptors and the associated kernel structures, the loop system calls, and think about how the shell implements redirection to understand how this works. Anyway, 50 iterations, as we promised. Now, let's try again in non-blocking mode. No difference here, we're still writing 50 times 1 megabyte of data. But what happens if we write data into a pipe? Once again, no difference. Each iteration writes one megabyte of data into the pipe. Now let's try that in non-blocking mode. Oh ha, something's different. It looks like in non-blocking mode, we are only able to write 64k bytes on each try. So to get to one meg, we need 15 times 64k plus 4960 bytes. So what happens is that our write system call attempts to write one megabyte but our pipe can only accept 64k bytes, the size of the pipe's internal buffer. So our write returns short, then tries again. 
but our pipe is still continuously consuming the data, so we don't really block yet. Let's try to simulate a pipe where the reader is not consuming the data for a while. That is, we literally are blocking consumptions. Here, in blocking mode, we see just that. Nothing happens for three seconds. Then the 51 meg write succeed. In non-blocking mode, however, we get a large number of errors, as for three whole seconds, our write calls are immediately returning with an error before finally succeeding as before, writing 64k size chunks of data. But pipes are not the only I.O. where we might block. Let's try some network I.O. We'll start a new shell and run netcat in listening mode. Here we now see our listener on port 8080. And we can write data into netcat. In regular blocking mode, we again see nothing unusual. Let's give it a go in non-blocking mode. Aha! Here we see that writes are performed in 60k chunks, it seems. Let's do that again and look at the output on standard error. Looks like we managed to write 64k data, but then TCP buffering kicked in, and we couldn't immediately write more data. A little bit later, the receive buffer was drained, and we were able to send a few more bytes. Then we are held back again, and then we continue writing in 16k chunks. This illustrates how TCP buffers data, and how network I.O. may at times block. Okay. So let's recap. To better understand non-blocking mode, as always, run the examples we've shown here. Also revisit the content from earlier lectures we referenced. Try to come up with other ways that might introduce a delay or block I.O. And perhaps see if you can change the settings on the system to tune the TCP buffers to lead to different throughput in the non-blocking mode. You can also try to send data to another host over the network instead of just on the local system or try to perform I.O. on a system that uses a network file system. You should see some blocking calls in those cases too. In our next video, we'll take a look at record locking. Until that time, thanks for watching. Cheers.